Windshield wiper motors are familiar to all of us, but how they work can be somewhat of a mystery. For example, in our classic British cars, the electric motor operates in one direction, but the wipers sweep in two directions. Or some people will tell us that these are DC motors with permanent magnets. Well, if you reverse the polarity on a DC motor with permanent magnets, it goes backwards. However, lots of owners of classic British cars have changed their car's polarity and the wiper motor doesn't seem to be affected. Or something else. If you're driving along and you turn your lights off, they go off. If you're driving and you come into your driveway and you turn your motor off, it stops. If you turn your windshield wipers off, they may seem to have a mind of their own. You turn them off, but they stay on all by themselves until they find their way home, and then they turn themselves off. And something which interests this technician is that 40 years ago, some of these wiper motors were using an advanced uh, electric pr principle called regenerative braking, a term which most people think was born with today's new hybrid vehicles. So our classic cars are not as old school as some would have you believe. So let's see what we've got here. This motor to my left, this is an older style. This one predated the one that we have to my right. And this would have been used up until this one started coming along. This was used in a 1968 MGB and from that point forward for all of the Bs. To get started, I'd like to show you something about this motor. This is one of the bolts that would have held the case together and watch what happens. Ah, and if we go to the other side, it does the same thing. Obviously, this motor has permanent magnets inside. In fact, if I flip it up so that you can take a peek inside, inside here you see the armature, this is the part that turns, and in a crescent shape over here and another crescent shape over there, there are two large permanent magnets. And what's interesting is because the armature is round and the crescent magnets are also round, the case is round. A dead giveaway is just to look at the end of the motor. If it's round like this, this has permanent magnets inside. Now, if we take a look at the one that's over to my left, this is different. First off, that's not round. That's nothing like round. And something else, if I take my bolt and I put it on the case, it certainly doesn't have a magnet in it either. So this is different. What makes it different? Well, if we take a peek inside this one, first off, off to the left side, this is the armature, the part that we saw spinning in the other one. And then about a third of the space in here is tied up by a coil of wire inside here. And it looks like there's about a million miles of wire in there. What does that do? Well, we learned back in high school that if we take a coil of wire and we put electricity to it, we create an electromagnet. That's what we have inside this one. This one uses an electromagnet. This one uses permanent magnets. Why the difference? Well, back when this was in style, and this is the one that was being used so often, what was going on was that permanent magnets, while they were in existence, were not very good. They were nothing like the magnets that we're accustomed to seeing today. So if they put a permanent magnet in here, it would have worked, at least in the beginning. But they also lost their magnetism all by themselves as time went along. So you could buy the car and turn on your windshield wipers and it would work just fine. But with time, year, two years, three years, four years, who knows, depending on how often you used it, it would get weaker and weaker until one day you would turn the wipers on and they just wouldn't have the strength to work anymore. But with an electromagnet, the first day, brand new car, you put power into this and you get full magnetic power. Five years, 10 years, 15 years down the road, you put power into this, you get full magnetic power. It would lose nothing. So that was a good way to go. Well, somebody could say, well, then why do we go to permanent magnets? Well, permanent magnets got a lot better. They became much stronger and they had a great ability to hang onto their magnetism for a very long time. And they were much less expensive to build. So the conversion was made from going to, from electromagnets to permanent magnets. Now that we're looking at this, let me show you what's going on inside here. Remember the armature, the part that goes around is right here and coming out this end is a shaft with what's referred to as a worm on it. And I'd like to ask you to look at the worm, specifically look at the right side. And as I turn the shaft, this right side of the worm appears to travel upward. It's pushing in that direction. And we all know how it works. It looks like a barbershop sign. What did it do? Well, the worm drove what was referred to as a worm gear. 
and this gear is cut to an angle to fit just right with these and this shaft will go down into this bushing so when this armature was spinning this would turn the worm the worm would turn this gear and this gear would go around much like what you see right here so we had a rotating motion going to another rotating motion much the same as it would with a ring and pinion arrangement but the important thing of this the most important part of this is this shaft I'd like to ask you to watch what happens. I'm gonna turn the gear as it would in here. I'm gonna ask you to watch what happens to this shaft when we happen. So the gear is gonna rotate around. She pulls the shaft over, she pushes the shaft back. Pulls it over, pushes it back. What's happening is we are taking a rotating motion and turning it into a back and forth motion. That's how a motor which goes around and around and around in one direction can turn the wiper motor, the terminal wiper blades, left, right, left, right, left, right, forward and back. Now, something else which is also really interesting about this is that if we look at the underside, there's this little white thing. It kind of looks like a jelly bean. And one might say, well, what does that do? And it's part of it. It's not just something that happened to land there. It's part of this gear. And she's on the underside. So when this gear is going around and around and around, this jelly bean is going around and around and around inside here. But it looks like all kinds of empty space. What could it possibly do? But I'd like to ask you to look right here, and you'll see there's a little teeny switch, and I can push it. When it goes down, it cuts off power, and when it comes up, it lets power flow. When this is in your car and you turn your key on, first thing in the morning, you send power to the ignition, you send power to things like your brake lights and your turn signals, it sends power to this motor. But when this is parked and this little switch is pushed down, the motor doesn't get any of the electricity. So what's with that? Well, imagine that I'm driving down the road and my wipers are going left, right, left, right, like they're supposed to. And this gear is going around and the jelly bean is going around into there. And every time she comes around, she pushes the switch and then lets it up again. When I turn my wipers off, I've got a switch inside my car. I turn my wipers off. So the power from my switch, which was making this run, has been cut off. But I also have power coming in from another source going through the switch. What that does is that when my wipers are working and I turn them off, even if they're in the middle of the windshield, they're going to keep operating from the power that gets through the switch right here. As this comes around, the jelly bean comes around, she's going to head for this little switch. If we look at the gear, the jelly bean is on the back. We've seen that. And you can tell where it is by looking at the top because this is a little black notch right here. If I line the black notch up with the switch and I put this arm where she's going to be here, you're going to notice that this arm is fully extended. It is furthest point. Why? Well, think about it. I'm driving along. My wipers are working. I turn my wipers off in the middle of the window. The jelly bean is somewhere up over here someplace. She comes around, and as she does, she's going to push this lever here forward. And right about the time that the lever it is its furthest place, the wipers are all the way down. The jelly bean is going to push the switch and turn the electricity off. That's called auto park. That's why when we turn our wipers off, they stay on all by themselves until they get where they need to be, and they turn themselves off. Now, we run into a, a secondary issue, and this is also fascinating, and we have to understand two principles in order to understand all of that. The first, I want you to imagine that you're in your car, we've all done this, and the engine's idling, and I've got my foot on the clutch. Okay, so she's just sitting there, and I'm, she's idling, my foot's on the clutch, and then maybe you were talking to somebody and you forgot the motor was on, or maybe your foot was wet from snow or rain, and it slipped off the pedal, but either way, what happens is the clutch comes up fast, and when it does... The motor comes to a dead stop. The motor that was idling is all of a sudden against a, a resistance that's way too big for it, and it stops the motor dead in its tracks. Hold that thought. Another thing we need to understand is that DC motors, like you see right here, and generators are so close to one another in design that you can actually use one to do the job of the other, and vice versa. All you need to do is just make a minor change in the wiring, and it will do it. The way this is set up right now, this is a DC motor. If I put electricity into this, it's going to spin. If I make a minor change in the wires and maybe put a pulley on the end so I can spin it, if I put spin in, electricity will come out. So I can put electricity in and get spin out. I can put spin in and get electricity out. I can turn this into a generator very, very easily. Now imagine that it is a generator. And I say, Mr. Generator, I want you to give me enough electricity so I can turn on the light on my dashboard. So the little teeny light is all I need. The generator says, I can do that, no problem. We start spinning the pulley that's making it work and she makes enough electricity and the little light glows. 
Well, then I say, Mr. Generator, I want you to give me enough light to turn on my headlights, enough power for those. She says, no problem. It's more work, but she can do it. And what happens is she starts making enough electricity so my headlights work. What we see here is that as the demand for power gets greater, the workload on the generator becomes harder and harder. The worst thing a generator can ever face is a dead short. That draws more current than anything, and it's an enormous load on the generator. Now let's hold all these things together. Imagine I'm driving my car down the road and I've got a headwind. If I had my wipers on, there's probably a storm and there's going to be wind. So it can happen. It can be pushing against my wiper blades, even if they're turned off and they're parked down here. Also, I've got wiper arms going back and forth and back and forth. So there's inertia. Also, wiper arms can have wiper blades. There's different kinds, some of them way more than others. There's inertia there. And some of these little cars had three wiper arms or three wiper blades. So imagine what goes on. I'm driving my car down the road. I turn my wipers off when they're in the middle of the windshield. They go over like they're supposed to. The gear comes around like it's supposed to. She pushes this back like she's supposed to. The wipers are going to go all the way down like it's supposed to. The jelly bean lands right on top of the switch, turns it off, and the wipers stop. Now, imagine I've got a wind pushing against my wipers and it tries to move them a little bit. Or imagine the inertia. Everything is all moving. I tell it to stop right now. Well, what can happen is this little rotor can come around. This gear can come right here. The jelly bean's right on top of the switch. And then a little teeny push and she rides off the switch. When she does, the switch comes up, the motor gets power, and she goes all over again. And what can happen is this thing can rack itself trying to park. You'll turn it off, it'll sweep all the way over, come back, it pauses for just a moment because the switch went off, and then because of the inertia or the wind, it moves the blades, the gear turns a little bit, and she comes right back. It looks like it has hiccups. It sweeps over, comes back, hiccup, and sweeps over, and comes back, and hiccup. It'll drive you crazy. They needed to find a way so that when this came all the way over and she turned herself off, she stayed right there. How did they do it? Well, this little switch does more than just simply turn the power off. This little switch makes the change in the wiring to turn this into a generator. And she makes it a dead short generator. So what happens? My wipers are in the middle of my windscreen. They sweep over because I've turned the switch off. They're coming around for the last time. And as they come around like this, the arm comes all the way over. The wipers are down where I want them to be. The switch gets pushed by the jelly bean. The switch turns this into a generator, turns it into a dead short. And even if there's inertia, even if something is trying to turn that just like when I let the clutch out, it stalls my motor right there. This gets locked right in space. That's called regenerative braking. I've turned the energy. I'm generating electricity with this and we use it as a brake to stop this from moving anymore. And that's how they stay there. That helps us to understand something. You may have noticed if you've seen one of these, for example, this is a two speed motor. So I need three wires. I need a wire for ground. I need a wire for low speed. I need a wire for high speed. So there's the three wires. That's easy. But you may have noticed that the plug, this plug has five terminals. Why? Well, we've got three for the motor. That's understandable. Remember, there's always going to be power going into this little switch that the jelly bean means. So that takes the fourth wire. And we need that one more wire to make the change from being a motor to being a generator. And that's why she has all five. Now, we talked about polarity and changing polarity. In this motor here, we've got an electromagnet. If you take an electromagnet and you change its polarity, you change which becomes the north end and the south end, or which is the positive and the negative, or which is the red and the black, any way you want to look at it. The armature in the middle also has polarity. So if I've got this set up, and what they have to have is coordination, okay? So just imagine that the polarity from the magnet at both ends has to coordinate with the polarity of the generator from the armature here. If I go and I change the polarity of the car, and on these old cars, they were positive earth. And if you wanted to put a new radio in your car, if you wanted to put a, a GPS system in your car, if you wanted to put a phone charger in, you need to change the car to negative ground. So I change the car to negative ground, and when I do, what happens is I swap the polarity in that electromagnet. It's opposite. But remember, the armature gets her power from the same source, so she's opposite too. I maintain my coordination. Okay? So whether it's this way or that way makes no difference. The coordination isn't lost because by changing the polarity in the one and changing the polarity in the other one, they cancel each other out. It's the same. This one is an entirely different animal. The magnets in this are permanent. They don't care what you do with your battery. They have their north and their south, and you cannot change it. Unless you physically take them out and turn them around, they're always going to be the same. So if I had this one here, and I went and I changed the polarity, 
I'm going to leave the, the magnets alone because they're not part of the electric system, but the polarity of the armature in the middle will swap, and I'm going to lose the coordination. This motor will now go backwards. And somebody says, well, who cares? I mean, as long as this is going around and around, the wipers are going to go back and forth. Everything's going to be fine. But notice something. On the jelly bean right here, there's a nice taper, just like a camshaft would have. And as she comes around to the switch, the little jelly bean pushes and pushes the switch in. It works nicely. On the back side is a steep drop. This is where I need to have strength for this to have what it needs to do its job. Well, if this spins backwards and she comes to the switch, there's no soft taper. This can damage the switch. And what will happen is the motor will be going around backwards. She's going to come and she's going to hit the switch. Instead of simply depressing it, she'll hit it and damage it. If she does, it's going to do one of two things. If the switch is left in a position so that electricity can continue to flow, I can turn my wipers off in the cockpit and they're going to keep going anyway. If the switch is set up so that the flow isn't there, wherever I turn my wipers off anywhere in the middle of the windshield, they're just going to stay there because I've lost the use of the switch. And somebody will say, well, okay, that makes sense, but I don't know if I've ever heard of that happening. But lots of people change the polarity. What's the issue? It comes this way. When this was the motor of choice, this style with electromagnets, most of these cars were all positive ground. So the cars that are being converted to negative ground would have had this, and remember the polarity changes right along with it, so there's no issues at all. The ones with the permanent magnets, these were coming along just about the time these cars were coming from the factory as negative ground. I don't have to change the polarity in this car for my radio or my GPS or my cell phone. So you almost never hear about it because it's not done. The only time you'd ever hear about it is somebody, for example, were working on the car and they put the battery in wrong and then they jumped in the car to see does the, uh, do the turn signals work, do the brake lights work, and they turn their wipers on to see if they work. They go back and forth across the screen just fine, but they don't know they were going backwards and they may have damaged that switch. Now, one more thing before we say goodbye on this video. This motor right here, I checked this in the Moss catalog before filming. We don't have these anymore. These are as rare as hen's teeth. So if you can't get another one, you have to take care of this one. What can I do to take good care of this motor? Well, there's not much and it's pretty easy. At the end plate, there's gonna be a bushing. You can clean that and lubricate it from time to time. Where the armature comes up and through, there's a bushing in here and a little cap up there that you can lubricate. But the most important thing right here at the end of the armature is a little arm right there with a bush with a brush right there, another one with a brush right there. If these brushes wear out, this arm will come down and make contact with the armature and destroy it. You can't let these brushes wear out. So once in a great while, just go on in, do a little bit of lubricating, and look at the brushes. These brushes are as easy to change as putting toast in the toaster. You just simply push the arm over, the brush is a little cube, lift it out, drop a new one in, and put it back, and that's that. It takes maybe $18, $20 for a set of brushes. It's well worth it. So once in a while, take a peek inside, take care of it if it needs it. And this one here, these are in the catalog, and one might say, well, do I have to take care of it if I can always buy another one? I would. So how do I take care of this? It's the same thing. At the end, you've got to have a bushing here. You can clean and lubricate that. Where the worm comes up at the top, there's going to be a bushing here, a point of contact there, lubricate those. And someone might say, but wait a minute, there's no brushes in there. Sure there are. There's three brushes in this. They're up at this end up here. This right now is being held on just by the magnets. You can pull this back, access the brushes really easy. Again, it's about $20 and put new brushes in it and she's good to go. So what have we learned today? We've learned that even though the motors rotate in one direction, they can let the wipers work in two and we know why. We learned that there's two kinds of magnets. The early ones had electromagnets, later ones had permanent magnets and we know what they do and why. We learned how even though I turn the switch off in my cockpit driving down the road, the wipers will go on over and park themselves on why they stay there. And we learned that it's very easy to maintain these and keep these going for a very, very long time.